Paul Gilbert, how you doing? I'm the guitar player for the band Mr. Big, and welcome to my guitar instructional video today. Uh, I'd like to, for this video to talk about some of the things that I feel are the most useful for playing rock and all its different forms. There's so many nowadays. There's, uh, you know, you go into a record store and there's not just rock, there's blues rock. A million different versions of rock, but they're all in a way based on that original blues kind of music. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the blues scale and what to do with it, how to phrase, and uh, you'd be surprised how much uh, a lot of this stuff really, really works when you play in your band, regardless of what version of rock you decide to play. Uh, and also try to cover some other things uh, that will help you very practically play in a rock band, because that is the most fun that you can have playing guitar, I think. It's fun playing by yourself, but uh, getting together with a drummer and bass player and a singer is the best thing there is in the world, pretty much. So I want to prepare you for that and uh, have some fun along the way. Hope you dig it. Let's have a good time. And uh, before we get started, we need to tune up. So I'm going to show you one of my favorite chords. This is an E chord. Most people, when they play an E chord, they play it like this. It's a very standard E chord. But I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Instead of using that G sharp note right there, I'm going to move that up to this B note. Fingerings, you have to sort of have to put your arm in sort of a strange position. But it's worth it because there's no third then. It's just all root, fifth, root, fifth, fifth, root. So uh, that's to me the heaviest of all the E chords with some distortion. That's pretty cool. Let's try to tune it up to that. Let me sure, make sure I'm in tune too. There we go. One really important scale to know to get into the blues rock kind of style is, of course, the pentatonic scale. And I'm going to play one for you in the key of A. It sounds and uh, looks like this. If you've been playing guitar for any amount of time, you've probably seen and heard that scale before. The, uh, the, the whole trick to it, or not even the trick, the art to it is to make that uh, scale come alive with all sorts of things that I'm going to show you coming right up here. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is vibrato, which really is one of the coolest things you can do on guitar. You know, if you listen to a piano player, they can do great stuff, but they can't do vibrato. And uh, the instruments that can do vibrato, like guitar or just about any string instrument, really a lot of the character and the style of the individual player comes through from the way they do their vibrato. And on guitar, there's a lot of different techniques to, uh, to get vibrato. I'll show you it's, uh, my favorite way of getting it which is uh, to use my wrist on my left hand. And the way I do that, uh, because obviously your wrist isn't touching, you don't play with your wrist, you play with your fingers. So, uh, but luckily for me, my fingers are connected to my, uh, to my wrist. So if I move my wrist, my fingers can't help but move also, as you can see right there. Um, I can keep my fingers still, but it actually changes position when I move my wrist. And the same thing happens on the guitar. If I play a note, like this here C note, and I'm actually not even moving my finger, it's my wrist that makes the whole string and my finger move. So you can see this part of my hand going up and down and my fingers, my finger's not doing that, it's just staying in one place and moving like that. And I always have this part of my hand, the top part of my finger, on the bottom of the fingerboard like that. And I use it as a pivot. So my hand just goes like that, my fingers stay straight, and the note moves. Now, if you want to, you can use your fingers, but it's, uh, it's just a whole different technique. I'm not particularly good at it, so I'm going to show you what I'm uh, a little more comfortable with. Hopefully that thing will work for you, too. 
one way of treating the pentatonic scale that works really well for uh, making it more musical also is uh, involves some bending and vibrato. Basically what you do, I'm going to take an E pentatonic scale this time. And just pick any note you want out of that scale and bend up to the next one. Uh, so sometimes you're going to bend up a whole step, like in, the, in this case, to get to that next note. And sometimes you're going to have to bend even farther, like if you pick this note, you got to get all the way up here. So you got to bend real far there. And that's a, a pretty far bend, but it's worth it. You get that. You can get really cool licks that way. And you can do that on just about any note in the pentatonic scale, just as long as you bend either a whole step or that minor third to the next note. Uh, you have to know the scale fairly well to be able to figure that out. That's an example of each one. Uh, you probably don't want to do it in order. It sounds too much like an exercise. You, know, you might want to mix them up a little bit more. Something like that. Another way of treating that is by, instead of starting on a pentatonic note, starting on the note below it and bending up to it. For instance, if you want to hit this note, the G, you could start on the F sharp and bend up to the G. So you don't have to bend quite as far, and it makes it a little more, uh, I don't know, fusion-y or jazzy sounding. And uh, you can get these kind of bending licks this way. And those are real, real useful in, in playing rock and roll. Just, uh, you know, picking some kind of groove. Uh. Another way that you can make the pentatonic scale come alive a little bit is by doing slides, not using a actual slide, but just sliding with your fingers on the string. A couple ways of doing that, uh, you can slide up to a note on one string like this. You can also slide on a lower string and then hit a higher note like this. I like the way that sounds a lot. Final way you can slide is from above. You start with a higher string and then go down like. So a lot of things you can do. I guess you could also slide down. You go. Like feel into the pentatonic scale than just playing it. Give it a try and uh, build your calluses too. Have fun with that one.
right, welcome to part two. Thanks for making it this far. Uh, we're going to continue on uh, talking about blues and what to do with it. Uh, this next part involves music theory, which usually music theory and blues don't go together at all. But uh, in fact, I remember when I first went to GIT and learned a lot about music theory, it kind of destroyed my blues playing for a while because I started playing uh, very diatonically, which basically means uh, very strictly within uh, scales. And most of those scales were major and minor scales, and they didn't really fit into uh, blues all that well. So for a while, it, it's kind of hampered my blues playing. But after I'd done that, I really wanted to figure out what scales worked for blues. So I thought there must be some. There must be some sort of rhyme or reason to it, you know, some way to study uh, what fits and what doesn't. And this is what I came up with. Um, of course, uh, first thing to look at is the chords in a blues progression, which are uh, usually, if, if, they're, if they're a big chord and have like thirds and sevenths and notes like that in it, usually be a dominant chord, like an A7 where you've got the root, the seventh, and the third. And sometimes you just hear straight this sort of thing. That still fits in. And believe it or not, the other two chords in the blues progression are also dominant chords. You'd have a D7 and an E7. So uh, the thing to play over those, believe it or not, I don't know why this works, but you can play a minor pentatonic and all the licks that you can come up with over that, over this thing that's got a major third in it. But when you do that, it really makes some other notes want to come out and escape. And one of those notes, believe it or not, is the major third. So a lot of times it's really cool to use both those thirds. Use the minor third and go right up to the major one right after it. So it's sort of the... Uh, the progression that can't decide which third it wants to use, so you just use both, you know. There's both right there. Both there again. Even in rhythm playing, you hear this a lot. With that minor third going right into the major. You can do it with bending. by actually fretting the note. But that's a really useful thing. Another way you can get that same effect is by playing the major pentatonic scale in that same key, which would be down here. And that gives you the major third right there. Both of those can work together over the same chord, strange as though it may sound. Now, it's, this is kind of cool because in a lot of classical music or music that's more structured, you can't get away with that sort of thing. And uh, there's a real art to putting the major and the minor third together, to putting those two scales together. Uh, to move on to the next chord in a blues progression, we are four chords. It's called a four chord because it's just based on the fourth step of a scale. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, Right there, it sounds real good to play, uh, how would you describe it? It's sort of a, uh, a Mixolydian scale. I'm, I'm scared to use that word since it's so big, but all it is really is uh, one of those. And again, when you just play the straight scale, it sounds sort of, uh, sort of clinical or just certainly not bluesy. It's, the art comes in and, and taking the notes of that scale, figuring out which ones are important to the chord, and uh, doing all the slides and bends around it. Let me show you a scale I came up with that is in that same position as your first chord, so you don't have to move your hand all over the place, but you can play over this chord. It goes like this. And it's uh, not really consistent throughout the octaves. It changes, just makes it easier on your fingers. For me, it's real good for phrasing. I'll give you an example. If you're playing an A. And you go to that four chord. And you can go. And it outlines that real well in that scale. And you can do the 
same thing with the five chord. Just move that scale up. Back down. Then back down to your one chord. And uh, it's a really useful scale. The, uh, the other notes that I like to add when playing blues are the, uh, of course, the blues note, which is the flat five. Or the tritone. Uh, in context, it sounds really, really, really nice with a pentatonic scale. And of course, you can still use your minor to major third moves. And I think the last really important note to consider is the major sixth, which uh, a lot of times is, I, can, I think of it as the Dorian note. It's a note that's specific to the Dorian mode. And it's also a note that sounds real good over that four chord. So that comes into play a lot, because certainly that four chord happens all the time in a blues progression. Now that you know some more notes to use for the blue scale, here's some more techniques that you can use to play them. Uh, here's some techniques that are sweeps, which for me are always a little bit frightening there. It's a difficult technique, or at least it is for me. Uh, so these are fairly short, so they're not quite as hard. Uh, the first one is hopefully pretty easy. It's, this is one of the easier ones for me because it's based on a chord that you see pretty often. If you're in the key of E, you just play a uh, major E triad. <laughs> But the trick is, since it's one note per string, you can do three downstrokes right in a row. And it sort of makes it into one, one move. It's not three separate motions like this. You don't, you don't really, really come up to, to go back. You just go down three times right in one direction. And uh, then I go up to the seventh. And the seventh would be an upstroke. So it's three downs and an up. And sometimes I'll even start on the seventh lower with an upstroke also. So it'd be up, down, 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 up. And from there, of course, you want to do some bends and some of those cool phrasing like. Another one that I like to do is very similar technique, just a wider stretch up on these notes. I start uh, this time on the G note, and here's the sweep. It's uh, the blues note, which would be a B flat, a uh, C sharp, which would be your uh, major sixth, that Dorian note. Then here we have the uh, E, it's a key where it ends, that always works. Then I end on the minor third G, which is in the pentatonic scale. bend that a little bit to make it sound like that major one. And I think I'll try a big huge one here. This is uh, another sweep, but this one's much larger. It's the, uh, the king of them all here. It starts on the low E. It has uh, three notes that are swept. It'd be the, uh, the root, the third, and the fifth. And I go up to the seventh with my pinky. So it's three downs and an up. Then I slide back up to the root. Do this shape here, which is four downstrokes right in a row. But you want them to sound separately, so you move your fingers. 
and then I go up to the E with my second finger and the G sharp with my pinkies. That's a pretty long one. I'll play it slow for you. And uh, that one takes a bit of work, but uh, give it a try with some distortion that can sound real smooth. You can even add little things on top with your uh, finger here like this. Let me give it a shot. <laughs> So, in my never-ending quest to try to be analytical about everything, I decided to make a blues scale that had all the notes of the pentatonic scale as well as all the extra ones that I've uh, just talked about. Uh, so I played that pentatonic scale, and I decided to add the, uh, the major third. I decided to add the flat five. Of course, the major sixth. And just for the heck of it, I threw in one more, the ninth. Oh man, it gets confusing with all those notes. Let me try it again. There it is. And uh, to try to get out of just playing a straight scale up and down, I came up with this pattern and this fingering. Check this out. Play a little bit slower. A lot of notes. It, uh, it's kind of a cool kind of fusion-y thing. So that's all the, uh, all the extra notes added in, sort of going in one direction, but it also works real well just to play a straight pentatonic and add those extra notes wherever they're going to work well. It's sort of an art to it, but uh, the more you do it, the more it works. But there's still three notes we haven't used. We haven't used the uh, flat nine, which would be the B flat in this case, and A. And uh, there's a reason we haven't used it. It sounds kind of strange. Uh, we also haven't used the uh, minor sixth. And we haven't used the major seventh. And uh, there's a way we can do them. There's a way we can use them, though. It's uh, by using some chromatic techniques. And let me show you the first one which uh, would be to use the major seventh. And basically all you do is you have to have all the good notes surround the bad one, like this. And then you don't really notice it. The bad one just sort of flows right into it, sort of passes. And then everything's okay. So you can actually use those strange notes that don't fit as long as you just start with a good one, stick the weird one in between, and then end with another good one. Uh, for the, uh, use the minor sixth, I like to do this lick where I take the, um, the major sixth and do a little chromatic lick surrounding it, which of course uses that, that weird note right there, and I end on the root. And pretty much anytime you end on the root, it's always going to sound good. So that's got those three chromatic kind of things. That looks real useful. Use it all the time. And I think the toughest one to fit in is probably the flat nine, which is just a half step above your root. It's real dissonant. And uh, the only one I could think of right off the bat is this sort of thing. It's almost a diminished sounding lick uh, with some string skipping in it. I do this. 
Just got the, uh, the little minor third lick on the G string. And then I skip over the B, don't play it at all. And go to this one here, uh, same frets on the high E. And then I slide up and do the same thing descending. Just do that over, over and over again. So that's a little more kind of jazzy, fusion-y, spacey sound. But that can sound kind of cool in the right spot, you know, in your, in your blues thing. You know, all your, all your uh, jazz friends will be impressed, hopefully. So uh, now you've got it. Every note works. You just got to know uh, the right way to do it. It's uh, an art and a skill, and it's, uh, it can be fun. So uh, get a drummer and give it a try. So I want to show you a couple fingerings where you can play these things a little faster for the uh, flashier guitar style. Uh, this one's going to be in the key of E blues pentatonic. And uh, these, these first two are basically um, chromatic kind of sounds. Uh, what I did is I took the regular pentatonic fingering of the top two strings and I added the chromatic note uh, below each of those fingerings. And you can just do uh, any three note per string fast licks that you know. I'll show you one that I know, which is straight up and down. You can do this. And you can do the same thing adding a note higher. So that's a little bit outside sounding. When I say outside, I mean it's a little bit outside of the scale, but still has enough inside where you know you can tell what key you're in, and it's kind of cool. Another cool fingering for uh, playing faster blues things is this. This is uh, one of my favorites because it's all the same. Get the same fingers. I use uh, my first finger, my third finger, and my fourth finger. It's very easy to visualize. Very easy, easy to see it in your head. You know, you can you can do the Santana thing and put your head back and uh, you know think about uh, your mantra while you're playing. You don't have to look because it's all the same. And um, it not only works good for fast stuff. You know, where you could play it. Uh, Many different paths you could do, like descending fours. But also, it's good for phrasing. You can pick uh, all the notes out of there and play them a little bit slower. With some of those bends and slides. Uh, pretty much always works and of course the fast stuff works good too One little, one little scale there. That's one of my favorites. I hope you like it too.
welcome to part three. Thanks for making it this far. Very nice of you to keep watching. Uh, and I'm glad your VCR is still functioning properly. Uh, for this next part, I'm going to continue on with uh, the blues style, rock style of guitar playing. But we're going to get into some more fast and uh, technically challenging guitar licks. Uh, I'm even going to change the key. I've been playing a lot in the key of A and the key of E. And uh, those tend to be very easy for guitar players. It goes along with the open strings. It's easy spots, all the dots in the right place. But I'm going to challenge you with the key of C this time. Nice on piano, a little strange on guitar, but it's OK. Up here. This first lick is a um, pretty straight blues scale, but I'm going to play five notes of it, starting with the seventh, which in this case is B flat. And then on the third, which uh, the E flat. And all I do are those notes, descending, it's five notes over and over with uh, a lot of pull-offs, and I try to get it as fast as possible. Now the, um, the pull-offs happen on the B string. I pick the first two notes, then two pull-offs, and then pick the last one. You can also go down and go up together. Another similar look to that is this one which uh, I'm going to start on the fifth, go down the scale, the blue scale, and on the root, just C. And again, do descending fives, just straight down over and over again. Do that a little bit louder with some distortion. And I'm going to modify that one slightly and put in the high root note, the C, instead of that, uh, this one. I'm going to replace it and go like this. And uh, let's hear what that one sounds like. The um, thing that sounds cool is you put the two together then, alternate between that note and this note. that first lick, you can use all three together like this. All right. Well, this next one, I think, is a requirement of all lead guitar players. If you want to be a lead guitar player, you got to know this one. It's uh, descending threes in pentatonic. So you take your pentatonic scale, A in this case, and you just start at the top note and go down three notes. Start at the next note down and descend three notes. Keep going on like that. And then you do it without stopping in the middle. So it sounds like... A real common lick, but you got to know that one. And again, I'm doing a lot of uh, pull-offs to help me uh, so I have to pick everything. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit easier to play. Now, another way you can approach this is by doing descending threes, but instead of starting on a lower note each time, you start on a higher note each time. So to make that work a little better, I'll start at the bottom of the scale on the uh, E note and do a descending three there. Then I'll start on the next higher note, next higher, and so on. And that's a little less common way of doing a, uh, a common lick, so there's a little twist on it there. Let me try it with some distortion. <laughs> Another variation on that, which I really like to do, is to do these descending threes, like right here, using the blue scale, the blue note in there. And I actually use the bottom two notes as a pedal, and I change the top note around. 
That sort of thing. You can do the same th fingering on the next set of strings. Those sound real good together. You can use that on the top of that same lick that we did before with the descending threes. It's pretty cool. Let's check that out. Cool. We'll take you up to the key of C for this next one again. Here's some more hammer-on pull-off licks uh, using the blues note and two notes on the B string. And uh, the pattern, first I'm going to do a little pull-off like this. Pretty simple pull-off and then just add two notes at the end. If you do that over and over again it sounds kind of cool. Fast and furious pull off licks. And you can do that in other spots too. You could do it here. And it only uses two fingers on your left hand, so if you uh, have a hand like Django Reinhardt, that one uh, work fine for you. Uh, another version, it's actually using the same notes, is this one where you just do descending threes. But the fingering's pretty interesting because you have to get your your third finger to go between the strings pretty quickly. To do those real quick descending threes. That's actually a very, um, very precise technique with both hands. There's a, a real quick picking thing that has to happen to go between those two strings that quickly. But that's a real useful lick uh, in the rock and roll world. This is a good lick for picking. Uh, it actually uses both of the thirds. It has the minor third and the major third, which is I told you about before, it can be pretty cool in these kind of progressions, using those kind of chords. So uh, this one, the pattern is pretty simple, just six notes, real similar to a picking lick that I like to use in other contexts also, but this one is more in the blues context because of the note choice. Other fingerings of that are this one. And this one too. And here's all three together. You can also do pull-off versions of that by adding a note. I like to add this note. It's the root there, the A. And I'm actually picking about half of it. You can move that up to the next position also. Key of 
G, another key we haven't really used yet. We're gonna use it now with a Mixolydian lick in the key of G. Mixolydian is one of those big words that uh, strikes terror into the hearts of those who haven't studied music theory. And I haven't studied that much of it, so I get a little frightening, or a little frightened when I hear it. Maybe a little frightening too. And uh, it's just these notes. It's the notes that go along with this chord. They sound like this. I'm just going to play those notes up and down as fast as I possibly can using hammer-ons and pull-offs. Sounds something like this. Kick-ass rock and roll. This is it. It's the end of the video. You've made it this far. Congratulations. Very, very cool for sticking with me. Thanks a lot. I hope that uh, all the stuff that I've been playing helps you out somehow in your own playing. And I uh, hope that you can get into a band and make it useful in uh, real live music. Crank it up. Have it sound good. Uh, always remember to use, use your imagination. I've got a uh, imaginative tuning here for you to check out. I'll play the piece first and then I'll show you how it works. I'm just doing a big stretch here. In the key of F sharp, a little F sharp minor arpeggio, but uh, check it out with this with this tuning. <laughs> one for you to figure out there. Good luck. We'll see you soon. Well, besides having a collection of fashionable clothes to wear, uh, there's one thing that will always secure your place in the band of your choice, and that is being able to sing as well as play your instrument. 
uh, and hopefully being able to do both at the same time. Uh, the best way to practice this is basically to do just that, to find songs that you like and play and sing them at the same time. It takes uh, some work, but uh, eventually you'll get it down. Here's one you can try. There's one that's uh, challenging for me. It's got some keyboard parts that I play on guitar, and uh, I get to sing along at the same time. It's an old Emerson, Lake, and Palmer song called Carnival Number no. 9. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. There behind the glass, there's a real blade of grass. Be careful as you pass. Move along, move along. Come inside, the show's about to start. Guaranteed to blow your head apart. Rest on short, you get your money's worth. And he dies Come inside The show's about to start Guaranteed You blow your head up by You gotta see the show It's a dynamo You gotta see the show It's a rock and roll Oh Exclusive 